Hello everyone, thanks for watching this Connect with Remedy webinar. My name is Doug Reif and I am a Principal Technical Support Analyst with BMC Software. Today's webinar will be on plugin server troubleshooting. Today we'll start with a brief overview of what plugins and plugin servers are. It's a good reminder before we start digging into more technical information. We'll show you how to configure plugins and plugin servers, and then we'll talk about the various methods of logging the plugins and the plugin servers. Finally, we'll show some troubleshooting processes and methodologies so that you can troubleshoot your own plugin problems. And we'll end the session with some references so that you can come back and do some more learning on your own. Plugins are Java or C code that run inside external processes, or plugin servers. They can extend AR system functionality to external data sources, that is, data that's not contained in the AR system database. They can also allow integrations between the BMC Remedy AR system and external programs or environments. All plugins are registered with a plugin server, which runs them as needed and coordinates all their activities and interactions. They can perform activities that's too complex for workflow or requiring more capabilities than what you can get in standard workflow. Here's a simple diagram showing a high-level overview of how plugins are used in typical workflow. An end user communicates with AIR server, performs some sort of API call. That API call can directly access the AIR system database, or it can make calls to a C or Java plugin. Those plugins can then perform work, which may or may not call upon external data to fulfill the request. Once they fill the request, they communicate back with AIR server, and the response is provided back to the client. Because of the capabilities of plugins, BMC extends functionality in out-of-box applications through the use of plugins. This allows tighter integrations and purpose-built code. It also offloads the work to an external process. Now, some examples of how we use plugins are in the approval server. So the approval server performs a lot of work, and all that work is performed outside of the AR server space. It also performs a lot of work that would be very difficult to perform using standard workflow. The CAI plugin as well performs a lot of work that would just would simply be too much work to try to perform through workflow, and it offloads that work into an external process. Area and ARDBC LDAP are examples of out-of-box plugins. The deployment manager that you use to upgrade the more current applications and to migrate packages from one environment to another, they all run on plugins. The FTS configuration form, if you've used that, is a plugin. So you can see these examples show how you can use plugins to really add functionality to your application, and we do this quite a bit in our out-of-box applications. Let's review the types of plugins. First, there's the AR filter or ARF plugins. These offload filter processing to an external process. This is what the CAI plugin uses. Um, it's called via a filter API filter action. So during your filter processing, you can make a call to a plugin via the AR filter action. ARDBC, or AR System Database Connectivity, is a type of plugin that provides access to data stored outside the AR System database. This doesn't necessarily have to be database type of data. This could be a file. It could be anything that can be represented as data. And these are called via vendor forms. Then we have the AREA, or AR External Authentication plugins, and these provide a way to validate users by connecting the AR system to a data source outside the AR system database. And these are called during login, if configured to do so. There's also a hybrid type of plugin. This type of plugin identifies as one of the documented types, one of the three above, but it adds functionality. It can act as both a standalone server and as a standard plugin. An example of this is the approval plugin. The approval plugin is an ARDBC type of plugin, and it does work as a vendor form, but it also performs a lot of functionality that's quite different than a vendor form, and that's what we call a hybrid. There are two types of plugin servers. First, there's the C plugin server, which is the original plugin server. Back before we had Java, we had C plugins. These use C libraries, and they're multi-threaded based on the plugin type. So you had pools of threads available for ARDBC, a different pool that was available for ARIA, and another pool for ARF plugins. Now, these C plugin servers still run. We still have a couple plugins that do use the C plugin server. But more commonly, we're using Java plugin servers. 
the Java plugin server is the primary plugin server nowadays. The applications primarily, if they require a plugin, they'll use a Java plugin. There's an individual Java virtual machine per plugin server, and you can have multiple plugin servers. These Java plugin servers are multi-threaded per plugin server. So each plugin server has a set of threads that will be shared amongst all the different plugins, regardless of the type of plugin. Let's talk about plugin communications. AR server communicates with plugin servers over RPC. This is very similar to the way that AR clients, Remedy clients, including the user tool, developer studio, the mid-tier, any other client, it's the same way that they communicate with AR server. In this case, AR server is actually a client of the plugin server. So the plugin server is the server listening for the RPC calls made from AR server. Plugin servers listen on port 390695. The server plugin alias is a key parameter that defines the host name and port for every Java plugin. When AR server needs to communicate with any of the Java plugins, it uses the server plugin alias to identify the host and port number to connect on. And it will always connect on RPC socket 390695. C plugins use the server connect name and plugin port to connect, so they don't necessarily need a server plugin alias, although you still can set one if you like, but they use the same values that come from the server connect name in the plugin dash port setting. Plugins can call back into AR server, so it's a two-way connection. Of course, in that case, the plugin would then be the client of the AR server again. One of the first ways to troubleshoot plugin issues is by checking the configuration. So let's look at how plugin servers are configured. Plugin servers are mostly configured in the AR monitor config file. This file contains a Java command line with all the Java settings to call and run the Java plugin server. On Unix environments, it may have a shell script that calls the Java command. There is going to be one line for each plugin server, and this line will set Java parameters such as the heap size, garbage collection parameters, and any other parameters that are needed to call the Java plugin server. This is an example of the full text search plugin server. Here you can see Java is running with the heap size set at 4 gigs. We've added several parameters for garbage collection, which are actually now best practices to use the garbage collection settings. These are the same settings that you would use on the AR server. In this particular configuration, we have JMX Remote set up so that JVisual VM can connect and diagnose problems with the plugin server. That's an option that you can set uh, using this parameter, using the command line in the AR monitor config file. You also have the class path, which is important. And then you have the server name, which in this case I've replaced it, but your server name will go here. And then another important parameter is the dash I parameter, which is going to be the directory that contains the conf directory where the configuration is going to be stored. Any of the specific plugin configuration will come from there. Here's an actual AR monitor config file from one of my Linux boxes. Here's the first plugin server being called. And you can see in the line here, it says it's AR plugin server main has a server name in the install directory. That calls the main Java plugin server. I can also see the FTS plugin server down here. See, in this particular case, it's using 3 gigs memory for the Java heap. I also see some shell scripts. So the normalization engine plugin server and the Atrium shared plugin server are being called indirectly through a shell script. So that's what you would expect to see in your AR monitor config file. The AR config file is the next place you want to look to set up your configuration. C plugins have a parameter plugin colon and plugin path colon that define the plugin and where to find the plugin itself and any related files. Java plugins are going to use the server plugin alias that needs to specify the plugin name, the host name that it's going to connect to, as well as the port. In the example I showed just a minute ago, we had at least three or four plugin servers. Each one of those plugin servers will have a different port. And so your plugin server alias lines are going to have all four of those ports identified. This is an AR config file from one of my Windows servers. And you can see here I have a couple plugins, the SLA plugin, the native signal, and two other plugins that are being loaded with the plugin colon line. These are all C plugins. And these all have plugin path settings to make sure that all the related files are found.
for the Java plugins, we're going to see server plugin aliases, and you'll see the different ports, 9999, and you'll see some other ports being used, 9556, for example. So there'll be one line, one server plugin alias line for each Java plugin server that I'm going to use. The AR monitor config file configures how the plugin server is started up with the startup parameters. The AR config file configures how AR server will communicate with the plugin server. Now we'll look at the plugin server config XML. For those of you that have been around a while and used some older versions of AR system, you've used the plugin server config XML to configure the plugin server and the plugins with that are running inside that plugin server. The XML file contains a local copy of the plugin server configuration. This file is synchronized with the centralized configuration. Primarily, the way that we configure plugin servers nowadays is through the centralized configuration. If you open up the Remedy Air System Administration Console, there is an option for plugin server configuration. And this is where a bulk of the configuration will be done. If you do manually edit the plugin server config file, uh, you can do that. And you can also make changes in the GUI using the plugin server configuration form. And whichever changes are most recent wins. So you are allowed to still make changes from the file, but we do recommend that you start using the form, the plugin server configuration form, to make all your changes. It's a lot easier to perform the changes using the UI, and some of the changes are dynamic, whereas when you manually modified the XML file, you had to manually restart the process for that plugin server. Some of the changes, especially those around logging uh, using the UI, are dynamic. As soon as you apply the changes, you do not have to restart the plugin server. Also, I'll show you in a minute that there's also a log viewer directly from this console. You can enable logging and you can view the logs directly from there. Let me just show you an example of a plugin server config XML from my Windows box. You'll see it has the port number that the plugin server is going to listen on. So each plugin server will listen on a different port, and you'll see this number be different on each one. And this again corresponds to that server plugin alias we saw in the AR config file. This file also contains a number of core threads. This is a really important setting when it comes to performance. Having the right number of threads will affect how the plugin performs. You have uh, some other settings. One key setting that we're going to talk about a little bit more is the plugin server name. This line here is the parameter that links this file to the centralized configuration. When you make an update to this file, a change in the plugin server configuration form is going to occur for the records related to this server name. So this uh, contains a GUID, so this name here has to be unique in the environment. Those are all the plugin server settings, and then down here you start seeing the plugin settings. And then uh, what you'll see is each plugin that's loaded will have a section here. And if I were to cursor through here, there's probably 30 or so plugins that are all configured in this file. So that's the plugin server config XML. And primarily, I said we're not going to use this file, we're going to do the configuration through the UI. So we'll look at that next. I'm going to go ahead and launch the plugin server configuration form so you can see it. First, I go to the AR System Administration Console. And under System, General, I see the plugin server configuration. Once I open that, the first thing you're going to see is a menu for the plugin server instance. And this is that unique identifier that has to match what's in the plugin server configuration XML file. So if I pick one here, it's going to load the information for that particular config file. I can see the information such as the port number, the max threads, and the other settings that were in that file. I also see the logging configuration, which we're going to talk about more later, but this is the section where I said if you enable logging and you change it, when you apply it, it's dynamic. Another thing you can get from this form is the plugin configuration. This, when I click on it, shows me all the plugins that are loaded in this plugin server. And for each one, they have different settings that you'll see on the right-hand side that can all be configured from here. Plugins can be combined into plugin sets. So if you click on the plugin set menu, you'll see a list of all the plugin sets. There's only one. 
When I click on that, I get a new tab for plugin set configuration. When I click on that, any of the configuration uh, pertinent to that plugin set is available to modify as well. What I just showed you was the plugin server configuration. The plugin server configuration is actually the centralized configuration just presented in a way that's a lot easier to digest. The forms that we just saw make it easy to understand the values and it presents them in a, a more clear way, separates them on the different tabs. But all that information that you just saw is stored in the centralized configuration. So if we look at the centralized configuration, and I check, check a component name for plugin server. I can pick one and I'll see all the same type of information just showed in a very linear format. Not very easy to understand. It's not grouped at all. But I did want to point out that all the information that you saw is actually stored in the centralized configuration. There is only one centralized configuration. It's just that the plugin server configuration makes it a lot easier to understand and to review and make changes to. The general ways to configure plugins and plugin servers is through the files and forms that I just showed you. But some plugins have their, their own specific method of configuring. For example, the CAI plugin has a CAI plugin registry. And from here, you can configure the number of threads, the private queue that the plugin is going to use. You can also enable logging from here. So this is an example of a plugin that has its own configuration page to do its own plugin configuration. Also, the approval server has its own configuration. If you open up the approval server administration, you click on server settings, you'll see this screen here where it allows you to enable logging for the approval plugin. You can also set things like the private socket that the plugin will use. ARDBC LDAP and Area LDAP both provide forms for you to configure those plugins. All the configuration settings from each of these specific plugin configuration pages are all stored in the centralized configuration. So those are the various methods for configuring your plugin servers and your individual plugins. Now let's look at plugin logging. Let's start by looking at what kind of plugin information you can get from the AR server logs. Plugins are called by different activities on the AR server. For example, ARDBC plugins are vendor forms. The vendor forms are going to be accessed via an API call or an escalation that references the vendor form. So we can look for any activity in the logs that references the vendor forms. Area plugins are called through an authentication. So the authentication call is going to have some evidence in the API and sometimes in the SQL log. AR filter plugins are always called by a filter. So any activity such as an API call doing a set entry or create entry or an escalation that calls such a filter is going to log that event. In general, the types of logs that you would get from the server are going to be API, SQL, filter, and escalation. Here we have an example of the API logging for an ARDBC vendor form query. We have a user that opened up the report creator form and they opened up a record. That caused a get entry API call on the vendor form called report creator. That vendor form call made a call to the plugin and that plugin one thing it does is it makes a call back into air server and it performs a get entry on the report form once it gets that entry it also performs a get entry blob to get an attachment from that form and then we see the end of the get entry blob and the get entry another example is from the CAI plugin making a call into air server so something invoked the CAI plugin to perform work and that plugin made a get list entry with fields call. And we can see here that it performed it against the CAI event parameters form. And we can see here that it logs it's from the ITSM CAI plugin. We can also see in the first example that it clearly logged that it was from the report creator plugin. Now that's one thing you want to look at in the API logs is you can tell which client and if it was a plugin, it typically clearly indicates itself. My next example is the filter logging for a filter API call. And in this case, it actually shows a lack of useful information in the logs. So here we see a filter called CAI EVT outbound modify start filter API local ran and it passed and it performed two actions, action zero and action one. Well, we don't see any reference here to a filter API. In fact, the first action or the action number one 
is a filter API call and there is no evidence of it running here. So the only thing you can really do is to identify that this filter actually called a filter API plugin, open that filter in Dev Studio to, to identify exactly which filter API it used and which plugin it called. So just wanted to point out that when you're troubleshooting filters, it is a bit difficult to go from the filter log to identify that it's a plugin issue. However, when a filter API call fails, you do get some logging. So here's an example where a filter passed, it performed a set fields action, which included a filter API call. Now that filter API call failed for some reason, and we get an error message, error while performing filter action, and we get error 8760. Now the nice thing is, here it shows us error 8760 cannot establish a network connection to the AR system plugin server and it gives us the host name and port of that plugin server. So for some reason, the plugin server on that port couldn't be reached when we made this filter API call. So it does give you some information when there's an error that happens while performing a filter API call. Area plugin logging is similar to filter API plugin logging in that you don't get a lot of information unless there's a problem. Here's an example where a GSI API call triggered an authentication. Now we know it triggered an authentication primarily because we see an authentication failure error message at the end, but we can also tell because there was a query against the user cache table. When you see a query against the user cache table, it's usually a telltale sign that authentication is taking place. Now in this log, there was an error, but it was very quick. So we don't really see where any plugin calls actually occurred. What we see is the query against the user cache, okay, and then we see an update and the bad password count is increased. So we don't really have any indication that there was a plugin called here, even though there actually was a plugin called. Let's look at the next slide. Now here we have another API call. In this case, it's a get entry against a form called support person, and it caused an authentication to occur. And we can kind of tell that from the fact that there was a query against the user cache table. Now in this case, it also failed. But the one thing we see here is that there's a huge gap, a five minute gap, between the select against the user cache table and the update to set the bad password count. So the absence of any logging in this area here is where the plugin call took place. Now we don't see anything, we can only infer that there was a plugin call. And so for this case, as well as with the filter API plugin logging, uh, ultimately what we're gonna have to do is look at the Java plugin logging to find out what actually happened. But I just wanted to show you what the AR server logs do tell you and what you can infer or see from those logs. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the C plugin, but it is important to know how to enable logs and to be able to identify things in the logs. So first of all, to enable the log, you simply go to the normal log files tab on the server admin console and you enable plugin log and you set the log level, usually to all. If you're going to be diagnosing a problem, you might as well get all the logs. So we recommend setting it to all. From the plugin log, you'll be able to see all the plugins that were loaded by the plugin server. And you'll be able to see any calls that were made to the plugin server. So in my case, I can see a query, a get list entry with fields against the report form. So any calls that are made will be logged here. Probably the most common log that you're going to use when troubleshooting a plugin issue is the Java plugin server log. Now this is set in the plugin server configuration page that I showed you earlier. By default, the log is enabled, it's set to true. It always is logging, but it's set to a warn level, which gives you very little information. So when you're troubleshooting an issue, we recommend setting the log level to debug. There is one higher level called trace, but it adds information that you probably aren't going to use. You also want to make sure you understand the file name and path that the log is getting written to and set an appropriate size and log history. In this example, the default is set to about five megabytes and 10 backup copies. So once you set that, you click on apply, the debug logging is automatically running. You don't need to restart the Java plugin server. So let's take a look at what one of these logs looks like. There's a lot of information that can be gleaned from this file and we'll go through uh, some of it. Probably won't go through all of it because there is so much. The first thing to look at is the T name. This is the name of the thread. And you'll see here it starts with main. What I'm showing here is a log from the very beginning of time when the server is starting up. So main is the main thread that loads all the other plugins. And I have quite a few lines where main is loading the plugins. 
And once main is done loading all the plugins, then we start seeing some other threads. And these are going to be your pool threads that are running all your plugins. And this particular server is set to have the default five num core threads. And so what we'll see here is five distinct thread IDs. If I span through the whole file, you see five different thread IDs. So those are all doing the work in parallel, multitasking. And so the log is going to show these different lines with the thread IDs kind of interspersed. So one of the things you got to remember when you're looking at this log is similar to the other uh, AR system logs, you might have one line here that uh, shows something going on, and the very next line is completely unrelated because it's on running on a different thread. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the log file that a lot of your work is going to be based on threads just like it is in, say, the API or SQL logs. Let's go back at the top of this file and move to the right a little bit. You see the uh, module name that's performing the work. Sometimes this is good, good information. Other times it's just extraneous. But there are cases when it kind of matters which uh, module is performing the work. Another piece of information that is the timestamp and then the actual log line. So since this is the beginning of the log, we see the normal startup information, like it shows the port number it's listening on, it shows that it's set to five core threads. In fact, you know, this is information in itself because this is the main plugin server, and I mentioned a little while ago that uh, five is a little bit low for the number of threads. So a uh, common troubleshooting technique, if you're troubleshooting a performance issue, is to make sure that this is set appropriately and best practices set, says to set it to 30. So already the log file is showing us something. The, now we see the list of all the plugins that are going to be loaded. And then one by one, we'll see it uh, loading these plugins. And this is going to take a while, and that's why you saw a lot of those lines that had the uh, main thread, is because it's going to be loading all these plugins with all the different attributes. So uh, if I look for the word successfully loaded, you know I can go through and see all the different plugins that were loaded in here and there's 30 some odd plugins. So what I can do is go to the bottom of the section that's main because that may not be of interest to you. You know, If it started up just fine you may not care about that. So we really want to get into the body of the logging and uh, if you turn on the logging after startup you're not going to see this information anyway. You're only going to see all this loading information when you enable the log and then restart the plugin server. So now you can see I have some real worker threads doing work now. So this is you know, the actual life, uh, day in the life of the, the uh, plugins. And we have the regular log. And you can see it, for the most part, tells you which plugin it's uh, working on. And then you're just going to get information about what that plugin is doing. Right now, these plugins have just been loaded. And so they're starting their instantiation, whatever it is that they need to do to, uh, to load themselves up. And so we'll see a lot of logs, uh, log lines for that. There's a couple other things I want to show you in the log. First, um, you can see this column here with the log level. So it's kind of interesting to see what was added when you uh, increased it to debug level. In some cases, there's a, a whole bunch of information that's added with debug. Uh, but there is quite a, quite a bit of information that's, that's here just with info. But uh, when you're troubleshooting, you know, some of the real important lines, especially like with uh, area plugin calls, some of the important data is only there with the debug. Speaking of area, one important thing to know is that every external authentication call made through area starts with the word verify login. If I uh, search in the log for verify login, I'll see calling area verify login. So this is the beginning of AR server making an attempt to perform an external authentication. And I can see here that the very first call is made through Atrium SSO. And I can see that there was a call made through Atrium SSO. Uh, for the, the login attempt, and that the login failed. The very next line then is that it's calling area verify login through area LDAP. So what this tells me is that the customer has two plugins configured for area, Atrium SSO and area LDAP. They may or may not even be using Atrium SSO. It might have been in there uh, from a prior install, but it attempted and quickly, almost immediately failed, so there's no real negative effect of that. Immediately it tried area LDAP. 
And what I can see in this log is that it's going through an LDAP authentication. It's trying to find the user in the Active Directories or whatever LDAP host they're using. And finally, at the end, it uh, receives a response for that user and it returns a successful login for what, whichever user, in this case, new user, that it attempted to log in. Now, right after this, I'll see another calling area verify login. If I go over and look at the threads, I'll notice that's a different thread. So that's a completely different call. It has nothing to do with the one I was just looking at. So the, the call I was just looking at began with the area verify login through HMSSO and went all the way down to where the response is. So that's what you're looking for when you're looking at the plugin logs for an area plugin. When you're troubleshooting a vendor form or an ARDBC plugin issue, one of the things you can do is look for the API call that was issued from AR Server. For example, if I know that AR Server issued a get entry for a particular plugin, I can search for get entry. And here you'll see there was a get entry for the report engine plugin. And then I'll see the rest of whatever work that was done for the get entry. Uh, if it was a uh, query, it was a get list entry with fields, I can look for get list entry with fields and here I see uh, again the report engine but it was a different API call from AR server and then I'll see the details of whatever happened with that get list entry with fields. Here's one more example of an API call on a vendor form. In this case someone was trying to save or create a new record on the AR report engine plugin and so we see the create entry and we also see a failure and that plugin happened to log a specific error message fields needed for table are not set. So we can see from the log that the create entry failed and it gives us some information about why it failed. And the last type of plugin is the filter API plugin. So if we simply search for filter API, you'll see any lines that were called for your filter API plugins. And each filter API plugin is gonna have different logging. So in this example, we're looking at CAI you can see a bunch of information log there. So that's in a nutshell what you'll find in the AR Java plugin log. There's one other type of logging I want to look at for plugins, and that's the logging that certain plugins have specific to themselves. And some examples are Approval Server, CAI, AR Migrate, which is the deployment manager, and FTS. They all have their own uh, logging specific to them. First example is approval. If you open up the approval administration console and go to the server settings, you'll see a page here where you can enable the, the logging specific to approval. This is plugin logging, but it's plugin logging with extra added uh, debug mode for, just for approval. And it does log it in its own log file that you can name. Here's an example of an approval log. You can see it looks just like the regular plugin logs. As some of the names are different, some of the modules are different because it's approval server. You'll see the different thread IDs, just like you did in the plugin log. But the most important part is that you get a play-by-play -play of what the approval server was actually doing. There's a lot of detailed information that you can use to troubleshoot approval problems. The next example is CAI. If you open up the CAI plugin registry form, you can see that you have settings for logging. You can set the log level to all and get the maximum amount of logging available. And when you enable that, you'll get a log that I kind of showed you a little bit earlier, you saw the CAI filter API information in the log, and this is a blow up of what that is. And really what it is, is CAI is logging detailed information to the standard AR Java plugin log, and it provides a play-by-play -play about what CAI is doing. So this is really useful information when you're troubleshooting specifically a CAI plugin issue. The next example is the AR Migrate plugin. Now I mentioned the AR Migrate plugin is a plugin that's used with the Deployment Manager console. Anytime you try to deploy a package, the AR Migrate plugin gets called. In 1805 and later versions, anytime you perform an action on the Deployment Manager console and the AR Migrate plugin is invoked, logging is automatically enabled and set to a debug level. So you get the maximum amount of detailed information every time the migration is done. Now that's nice because you're not performing uh, deployments all the time, but when you are and you have to troubleshoot, you'd like to have the debug level automatically set, and it is. So that's a really nice feature. Now let's look at an example of one of those logs. The file is called ARDTP Plugin Log. 
and this is plug-in information so some of this information uh, normally would be available in the standard Java plugin log but they've pulled it out and put it into its own log and you'll notice that it all says info but they've written this plugin so that even at an info level it's writing debug information in other words it's writing all the detail as much detail as it has now I'm not going to go through every line because this is very specific to the migrate the AR migrate plugin but you can see just by looking at it there's a lot of good detailed information about each step of what the deployment manager is doing when it's importing um, deploying rolling back or whatever activities that you're doing from a deployment manager so it's a very useful log when troubleshooting the AR migrate plugin The next example is FTS, and FTS is kind of a big example. Now, FTS is a major component of Air Server, and it has multiple ways to provide logging, and we're not going to get into all those different methods. But one of the components of FTS is that it has the searcher plugin. If you're familiar with FTS, you know that on the indexer server, there's a plugin, and it runs in its own FTS plugin server, and that plugin can be logged using very specific kinds of, of logging. And how you enable it is by going to the FTS secondary directory under the plugin SVR folder, and there's a log for J file there. And you need to hand edit that file and change the log level from warn to debug. And once you do that, uh, you'll need to restart that plugin server, which is typically okay. It's a searcher. So uh, once you restart that, it'll invoke the debug level logging. And it'll create a file called ARFTS plugin searcher.log. This is plugin logging. It's uh, very specific for FTS, and it's a really a quite useful log. So we've looked at a bulk of the ways to configure plugins and plugin servers, and we've looked at most of the ways that you can get logging from AR server, the plugin server, and the specific plugins. So now let's look at troubleshooting methods. So how do you actually troubleshoot a problem? Well, first, let's look at what types of problems are, I want to say, common, or what types of problems can you expect that you might have with plugins. An obvious one is a plugin doesn't load, or a plugin fails to start or times out. Uh, the plugin server is not running and does not load plugins. Plugin server is not responding and all the plugins time out. You know, these sound like uh, complaints that you might expect to see when you have plugin server issues. The plugin server occasionally times out as it's not configured to handle the volume, uh, which is uh, more of a performance issue. Uh, plugin error occurs, so we already saw an example of an error, but there's uh, quite a variety of plugin errors that you might see. The air system server fails to establish a connection with the plugin server. The air system server times out when connecting to a plugin server. Possibly there's no error, but what you um, but you want to see the debug logging to understand the behavior of the plugin. Maybe a plugin is is behaving in a way that you don't expect, but it's not necessarily broken or possibly doesn't provide any kind of error message. Maybe the first thing you want to do when troubleshooting an issue is understand where in the chain the break occurs. So here's a chain where the client connects to the AR server via an API call. That API call calls a plugin. That plugin might actually make an API call back into the server, and that's going to send a response back to the plugin. And then that goes all the way back to the server and back to the client. So that's your chain. So where in the chain did the break occur? Because based on where the break is, you're going to want to collect the appropriate logs. So if the problem was at the client, you might collect mid-tier logs or user tool logs, depending on what the client is. If the problem is in the server, you want to collect API SQL filter logs. If the problem is in the plugin, you'll want to collect the plugin server logs and any of the specific plugin logs that we talked about. So where in the chain the problem occurs is going to help dictate what types of logging that you're going to gather. If you're not able to detect where in this uh, chain the problem is, then you may have to collect more logs than what you might need. But that is a way to proceed, is to have more logs than you need and let the logs guide you. Depending on what the symptom is and where in the chain you determine the problem to be, you can use some of these tips to try to analyze the problem. If the problem is that the plugin server won't start up or is starting up incorrectly, remember you can look at the AR monitor configuration. The AR monitor is where the configuration settings for the plugin server are stored. 
This includes things like the heap size, the Java path, and other JMX settings. If the plugin isn't loading, then you'll need to check the plugin server configuration. Now that can be done through both the plugin server configuration form, which as I stated is the recommended method. You can also quickly look at the plugin server config XML. You can also check the logs. As I showed earlier, each time a plugin is loaded, it will show successfully loaded Java plugin. So you can check that log if you enable the debug log or even if it's on the, the default uh, warn level. If you restart the plugin server, it will log all of the plugins that were loaded and it will tell you if it was successfully loaded or not. And if it wasn't successfully loaded, you should see an error message indicating why it couldn't load. If a plugin is behaving incorrectly, Remember that the plugin is configured both through the individual configuration forms, such as the approval and CAI had their individual settings, and also the plugin server configuration form. So check both of those locations. Another type of problem you might have is plugin communication back with AR server. If that's the case, normally if you check the AR Java plugin log, you'll see a message telling you about the communication problem. For example, in this case, in my Java plugin log, I see a very clear error while connecting to AR server. In this case, it tells me it got an error, error 94, because it was a timeout. And it can, says, consider using more specific search criterion. So uh, in this case, the plugin actually did make a connection back into AR server, but whatever it did, it took too long. And so that is something that I can specifically troubleshoot. If you have a situation where the plugin server seems to start up correctly, but AR server can't connect to it, one of the things you can do is test the plugin server connectivity outside of AR server. There's a knowledge article, 127564, that contains a utility that will help you test this. This utility verifies that a plugin server running on the given host and port number is up and running. It simply checks to see if the plugin server is processing RPC calls. It does not check if the plugins themselves are working. This utility creates an RPC TCP client connection to the given plugin server and triggers a simple inexpensive call, the ARES signal call. It's a no-op for plugin server. It doesn't do anything, but it does test that a connection was actually established. If no error, it means that the plugin server is up and running and accepting RPC calls. If there is an exception, it means that the clients can't talk to the plugin server or the plugin server is too busy to process RPC calls. Either way, this utility will help you know whether that plugin server can accept calls from AR server. And if it can't, it should give you a message about why it can't. I have provided some troubleshooting methodologies for you, but there's another good resource that you have available, and that's the documentation. In the link I provided here, it provides general plugin and plugin server troubleshooting steps, which are actually pretty thorough. It provides troubleshooting steps based on the plugin type. So ARIA, ARDBC, and ARF plugins all have different methods of troubleshooting, and they're all clearly documented. It also includes troubleshooting steps for individual plugins. So this is a really nice document to have available to you and to uh, peruse and review when you're troubleshooting a plugin issue. Here's the doc link I just mentioned. And you can see here there's several links for a general approach for troubleshooting plugin issues, enabling server-side AR system logs, troubleshooting issues with plugin servers in general, and then troubleshooting issues with AR DBC plugins, AR system filter plugins, and area plugins. Let's take a quick look at the general approach. So this is really good information on how you might uh, approach troubleshooting your own issue. It says to effectively resolve a plugin issue, you should first isolate the issue to the server, plugin, or to the context and use the following guidelines. And these are really useful guidelines to keep in mind. Identify the steps to reproduce an error is always something you should do. If a server group is in use, connect to each server in the server group and perform the same steps to see if the issue is isolated to one server in the server group. I'm not going to go through each of these items, but I wanted to make you aware of this valuable and thorough troubleshooting documentation that's available. There's one other document that I think you'll find an extremely valuable resource. It's the Enabling Plugins document. So let me show you. This doc page has a lot of useful information. There's quite a few links here that you can look at. But the main thing I want to show you today is it has a list of all the plugins that are provided by AIR system in the ITSM suite. And for each plugin, it has the name, the type of plugin it is, the architecture, whether it's Java or C, a brief description, and what component uses that plugin. So for example, here I have the ARSYS AIR filter API config check. It's used by UDM. 
Now if I open up one of these, I get even more information. I get information about the plugin, how it's configured, links to other related information about that plugin. And in some cases, I get very specific troubleshooting steps. I'll just pop back to the main screen one more time and take a look at one more plugin. Let's look at the area LDAP plugin. You can see here it has configuration information, and then it has troubleshooting area LDAP plugin issues. So it has very specific steps for this type of plugin. This page is going to be really handy for you when you're troubleshooting plugin issues. And you may just want to reference this and look at some of these other links as well. We've provided some references for you to do some more research on your own. The first is the troubleshooting plugins documentation. This troubleshooting guide walks you through the various types of plugins and how you can start troubleshooting them. It's got very detailed information and is a really good resource for you. The second one, the enabling plugins documentation, has information on all of the plugins that are included in the ITSM suite. It has information about troubleshooting, what the plugins do, how to configure them, etc. Really good information. The last one is the knowledge article that talks about the plugin server utility. So this link will provide you the documentation and the utility itself. So if you have a problem with your plugin server, you can use that test tool to make sure that it's running and uh, is able to be connected to. And that concludes this presentation on troubleshooting plugins. Thank you for watching.